Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, June 7th. We are going to review all of our trades for the week, but before we do that, let's jump into the community and talk about who got caught being hot. Each week, Like we like to recognize one member of the community for helping other traders. This week goes to Jeannie Haupt. Hope I said that right, Jeannie. And uh, Jeannie's been really consistent, just really contributing to the community, being active, providing insight, answering questions, asking questions. So keep up the good work, Jeannie, and congrats. You got caught being hot. Let's, uh, let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with Monday the 3rd. Our first alert was in wheat, and we just closed out the put vertical side of our iron condor. And uh, price breached our upside break even, so we just closed out the untested side and looking for price to come back into range. You can see price is hanging out just outside of our range right here, so just needing a little bit more downside in wheat to get back into range there. We've also got another position in the uh, what, what Toss recognizes as the August cycle. Tastyworks is going to call it July, but it's the one that currently has 49 days until expiration. You can see we've got some profit in this one, but not enough to take off yet. So we're just in the holding mode on that piece. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So we had two pieces on here. We had this, uh, this adjusted strangle and we went ahead and rolled that from June out to July. We were under 21 days to expiration. And so that's when we look to start extending duration and rolling that out, reduce our gamma risk. And so that's what we did here. And so if we take a look at SMH, we've got two different pieces here. We've got this adjusted strangle, which is this one here that we just rolled out. And you can see prices come up nicely. We've gotten back over $700 uh, in profit since that roll. Now we're still down on the trade overall, but then we've got this other piece as well. Uh, where price is just kind of hanging out up here, not much P, uh, P and L, not much profit or loss. So, just playing the waiting game in SMH. Next one, uh, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we've got two different sets of short call verticals that we've just been rolling to keep that short delta exposure. Roll this one from 18 days out to the 46 days to expiration. We were well over 50% of max profit with the down down move that we saw last week and earlier this week uh, had, had moved to a point where we needed to kind of book that, lock that credit in and and move on. So we went ahead and rolled out and we rolled down our strikes to adjust. And so if we take a look at QQQ, we've got these two different pieces on here. They're very, very close as far as the strikes go. But you can see with this up move here recently over the last few days, price has uh, moved out of our range now, so we're just holding this to hopefully get back into range. Also holding holding onto that for that short delta exposure. Speaking of short delta, we are just under one to one, basically on a ratio of short delta to theta. We kind of like to be in that range of between one to one and five to one of our short delta versus our theta. Uh, our theta is actually slightly higher than our short delta right now. We added an Apple position, a short Apple position uh, earlier this week, which I'll, I'll touch on here in a second. So we're just kind of slowly adding short delta. And then obviously when the market goes up, we naturally gain some short delta. So we're real close to that one-to-one -one range, uh, slightly, slightly under one-to-one. -one. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in FXI. So we closed out the call vertical side of our iron condor. Uh, there's very le little value left in that side, so we're still holding that put vertical side. And um, and then later on, we ended up adding another iron condor in an alert. So let's go to FXI and take a look here. So we've got these two different pieces. We've got the short put vertical that's still left in the June cycle, and you can see prices come back up into range. So if we get a little bit more up movement, we'll go ahead and book that one, which will book a profit on that June iron condor overall. And then we've got our July one, which is fairly centered here, uh, just kind of hanging out, just waiting for some time to pass on that one. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas forward slash NG. So we rolled one set of our short strangles. We were at 21 days to expiration. We went ahead and rolled that out to the one with 52 days. And we adjusted our calls down. Price has been pretty weak in Nat Gas. So we're just rolling our calls down, staying mechanical. 
and uh, and and staying with the system. And so we rolled that out. Um, and then we at that point we still had one set that was still in July with 21 days, uh, but we had held that for a couple of days. We like to just spread out our roll, so we're not doing it all at one price point, all at one time. All, all at one point in time, we like to spread that out. So we did this one, and then a couple of days later, price moved down some more, and so we did the other one. And so let's take a look at Natty Gas here. So we've got these two different pieces. And keep in mind, uh, the the short put, both of those are at the three strike. I've mentioned this before, but because this is so deep in the money, the open interest starts getting a little bit sparse out here. So we wanted to pick one. You know, We didn't want to do the 2.98, which has zero. Now the three, you know, it's only in the low hundreds, which we like to see more than that. But uh, if price starts to move in our, our direction, then we'll we'll get some more uh, open interest flowing into that strike. But we just we're using the three strike that we've done for a couple of cycles now, just because it, it is so far in the money. But price is hanging out right here in the lower end of the range. We just need we just need some up movement in Natty Gas to help help benefit that. Um, let me get this chart back on. So here's a here's a chart of Nat Gas, and you can see over the last couple of weeks we've had a real pretty sharp slide to the downside in Natty Gas. So if we get a little bit of a bounce, that will be much welcomed for us on our Nat Gas position. Next trade, closing trade in XLV. So we had an iron condor on here, booked over 30% of max profit on that trade. So we are out of XLV. Uh, opening trade in Apple. This is one I mentioned just a couple minutes ago. We uh, were just looking for areas to add some short delta. Uh, Apple looked like a good choice, and so we just put on a long put vertical in Apple. So let's take a look at a chart. Um, so what we were looking at is, I mean, Apple's had this huge slide down and then started to bounce up, and we were looking at this for a potential continuation to the downside. Now, obviously, what happened was not what we were looking for. We had a massive move up for a couple of days. Now, we're still in decent shape. I mean, nothing to worry about. We're just barely out of range here, uh, but just looking for some downside in Apple. And so that was, we look at these as both a positional trade, meaning we are obviously wanting it to go in our direction. Uh, so, and that's how we look at it. If we have a big move in one direction and then a little bit of a reversal, a lot of times you'll get a continuation to that same same direction. And so that's what we're doing. Nothing nothing magic about this. Just looking for potential setups to add short delta and and Apple fit that criteria. Now, obviously, it doesn't always work out, uh, but we could we could still roll over from here. You never know what's going to happen here. But uh, just uh, just adding that short delta kind of offset our. Uh, some of the other long delta that we had in our portfolio. So that's what we're where we're at in Apple, just continuing to hold that for now. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in FXI. I already mentioned that we added that new one. We actually didn't take a look at it. Um, so we've got the, uh, uh, yeah, the full iron condor out in July. I did mention that, sorry. So it's, it's just uh, playing the waiting game on that piece. And then the closing adjusting trade in DIA. So we had two different iron condors on, uh, one in June, one in July. We went ahead and closed our June, booked over 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And then we are still holding the um, we're still holding the July iron condor. You can see price is now hanging out in the upper end of the range. If it continues higher, we'll close out that untested side and manage as needed. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Nat Gas. So here's where we rolled our second set of strangles. At this point now, we we're down to 19 days to expiration, so we rolled that out to 50. And uh, I already, already kind of showed you those together, just needing some upside movement in Natty Gas to benefit there. Next trade was an opening trade in gold forward slash GC. And as I mentioned in the notes here, uh, iron condors or, sh or short strangles could be considered in either GC or if you prefer the ETF, you could do GLD. I just like uh, I liked GC in this in this case just because of the the credit we were getting and the risk reward. So if we take a look here, this is the Iron Condor. We've got a tiny bit of profit since we put that on, uh, but just continuing to hold at this point, uh, letting some more time pass in gold. If we look at a chart of GLD. Uh, you can see uh, we've had this big run up and then we got this spike in implied volatility. And so now we're looking for price just to kind of simmer down and stay in our range so we can book a little bit of, uh, a little bit of profit. 
Next trade, a closing adjusting trade in IYR. So we closed out the put vertical side of our iron condor in IYR as preach, uh, price breached our downside break even. There's very little value left. So we closed that out. And then the very next alert, and this was, these were both this morning, uh, we added a new centered iron condor in IYR in the July cycle to pick up some more credit and just to continue to manage that trade. Uh, this one we did a little bit tighter. Let me show you what I mean here. So if we go to IYR, we've got the, uh, we closed out, like I said, we closed out the June put vertical. And so we're still holding that call vertical side. You can see big move in IYR to the upside uh, broke through our break even. So now we're just looking for a little bit of retracement back into range before we do anything with that one. And then the other piece that we added was this tight iron condor. And you can see price is still very centered. We just put the, this on this morning. But the reason that we did it so tight, it's almost like an iron butterfly. You can see we we're just a couple strikes different here. Uh, we sold the 91 and the 90. Uh, excuse me. We sold the uh, sold the 90 call and the uh, 89 put. So very, very narrow. And the reason we did that is we I was looking at different strikes. And when you look at these... On the call side, look at our long. I mean, it's it's to a point where you know fairly low open interest. If we went out one more strike, there's no bid. The ask is 18, no bid, and so we didn't want to choose that one. So we just tightened up. Uh, we moved our long strike up to the 94, and then our short strike we tightened up almost near the money, just to collect enough credit to make it worthwhile. We're we're almost treating this more like an iron butterfly, where we will manage earlier. So we, we, we might manage this at 25% of max profit as opposed to 30 or 40 on a traditional iron condor so that you get a lower probability of success, but you also get a, a larger credit. And so that's why we chose those strikes that we did in IYR. So those are all the alerts for the week, kind of a light week on the actual alerts sent. Uh, but we had a lot the last week, so that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, let's take a look at some of the other positions. Oil is making a nice move up today in our favor. This is a short strangle that we put on. Implied volatility was nice and high when we put it on, but then the very next day, implied, implied volatility spiked to a point where we were down about $1,200 on this trade, even though price was still well within our range. It was about where it is right now. Uh, Volatility has contract, contracted some and price has moved back up. So now we're down, still down over $400 on the trade, even though we're still well within range. So just playing, playing the waiting game in oil. ES, we've got this long put vertical that we've been holding for that short delta exposure. And you can see that price is with this strong, strong movement in stocks these last couple of days, price has moved out of our range. So just holding that for some, some downside. It's part of our short delta hedge. Uh, I mentioned gold. I mentioned that gas. Bonds. Bonds have been just incredibly strong too, which is interesting. On a big update of the market, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see a little bit of an inverse correlation where bonds will move down, but both stocks and bonds are extremely strong today. We've got this uh, short strangle that we had uh, adjusted into a straddle. You can see prices hanging out near the low, uh, upper end of the range here. If we look at just the puts. You can see we still got plenty of premium left in those puts, so not make, lo not looking to make another adjustment in bonds yet. Uh, we've got yeah, we're, we've got plenty of time. We've got 49 days to expiration uh, before we need to do anything here. So just playing the holding game in bonds. I mentioned wheat. I mentioned Apple. Uh, John Deere. We've we put this on for short delta exposure a couple weeks ago. And it's actually been very strong. Even when the market was going down, this stock uh, continued to rally a little bit. But kind of a similar thing. We had this huge push down. And then after the earnings, another push down. And then it started to bounce up. And we were looking for a potential kind of a rollover continuation. But it has stayed strong. So just holding that for that short delta exposure uh, could easily get back into range here. Uh, we've still got 14 days left, so we're not going to do anything with this until at least until expiration week, unless it makes a quick move down and we just and we were able to book profits. But assuming it just kind of is stays normalized or grinds higher or lower, we'll, we've got you know another week and a half or so before we really need to do anything in that. 
Mentioned DIA, EWW. We've got a short strangle on in EWW. Got some profit there, but not enough to take off yet. I mentioned FXI. Intel, this one's coming back nicely for us, back into center. This is one that we adjusted and then rolled out. And then, and now we'll just continue to manage that as needed. Um, we're still down on this one a little bit. I, uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly what we were all, uh, what we're down. I, well, I'll have to look at the, the uh, tracking sheet that we use, uh, but we're still down a little bit. So we'll try to get some more profit back in this one before we do anything. IWM, we've got two pieces on here. Uh, this one come back. This one's come back into range. So if we get a little bit more up movement in that piece, we'll we'll book that one. And end up booking a profit on our June iron condor, and then this is our full IC out in July, which got a tiny bit of profit. Just waiting for some more before we do anything there. Cree K R E. We've got this strangle that we adjusted into a straddle. Uh, you can see we've got a little bit of profit since that roll, just waiting for some more before we do anything there. Qualcomm, we've got this short strangle here. Uh, we've got some profit here, just going to hold this over the weekend, see if we can get some more, squeeze some more out of that before we book that. If we get a little bit more up movement, a little bit more contraction and applied volatility, we could potentially be able to take this one off Monday or Tuesday of next week. QQQ, I mentioned, SMH, I mentioned that one. We've got those two different pieces. SPY, we've got two pieces on in this one. We've got the full iron condor, where you can see we've got a little bit of profit on that. Just waiting to, uh, for some more before we do anything. And then we've also got our short call vertical, where you can see prices hanging out right here, just outside of range. So just looking for a little bit of downside to get back into range there. XLK, this is one another one we've been holding for that short delta exposure. Uh, it was looking looking nice, but a couple strong days and prices out of our range now. So just looking for some more downside to get back in. And then lastly, XRT, we've got this short strangle on here with some profit, but just waiting for some more profit before we book anything in XRT. So that is all, my friends. Everybody have a great weekend. Hopefully we get a little bit of uh, reversal back to the downside, create a little bit of volatility, help our portfolio, and uh, everybody have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.